Greetings and welcome to this special six-part mini-series of the show. I've always tried to keep the focus of this show on collecting rather than just reviewing games. Although I collect just about everything from the classic microcomputers to the arcade systems, one of my favourite areas of collecting has always been horror games. A series that has risen to popularity with collectors in recent years is the Clock Tower series. The premise is almost always the same, with the scissor-wielding villain stalking groups of young girls. On the surface, this series seems simple enough to collect. However, I personally see so much misinformation and just all-out crazy beliefs being shared about the series, I couldn't help but try and put the record straight. I'd like to kick off this mini-series with an overview of the games themselves, and then follow up with a more detailed look at each game in its own episode. Personally, I feel that the problem of confusion around the series originates from gamers not owning a physical copy of the games and not taking the time to learn the back history of how this amazing series grew from an obscure Japanese oddity to a horror game collector's most sought after series. The fact that you can download games in an emulated state has really caused confusion when it comes to the release year, language, value and even titles of the games themselves. My aim in this mini-series is to make sure that you as a collector understand what you're looking for, where to get it and what you should be paying for these games. Hold on for the history lesson and prepare to be confused as I unravel the mystery of collecting the Clock Tower series. First and foremost, it's important to understand that the Clock Tower series looks different depending on which region you're collecting. Quite often, gamers are talking about the same game with a different title, or the same game with alternate titles. If you're collecting the full Japanese set, you're looking at six key items plus the addition of a spin-off game. The US received only three official games in the Clock Tower series, plus the spin-off game. If you happen to live in the UK or wider Europe, there were only two officially released Clock Tower games, plus the spin-off game. It's no wonder that the internet is full of inaccurate or misleading information due to the regional differences. Let's start off with Japan. Personally, I take Japan to be the definitive set for collecting Clock Tower. Japan saw all the versions that the other regions did, and also additional formats and demos. For Japan, the timeline is relatively straightforward, and easily makes the most sense if you were to play the games in chronological order. First up, in 1995, the game simply titled Clock Tower was released on the 16-bit Super Famicom. It featured 2D graphics and was in Japanese language only. This game has never officially been released outside of Asia on the Nintendo platform. The game did, however, see a Japanese language port to PC in 1997 and the Wonder Swan in 1999. The Famicom release of Clock Tower is effectively the first game in the series by all respects. In 1997, the same game, Clock Tower, saw an updated re release on the PS1. Although this game was essentially the same as the Super Famicom version, it did feature updated graphical touches. At this point, the first PS1 version was given its own title, The First Fear. The First Fear can be considered a remaster of the original Clock Tower. Here's where things get a little confusing though, as the previous year, 1996, saw the release of Clock Tower 2 in Japan. This game was released on the PS1 and it featured full 3D rendered graphics. This is one of the most played games in the series to date, and is known as Clock Tower 2 in Japan. However, to confuse things, this game had already been released as a not-for-sale extended demo. The game was known as The Door of Fear. This title was dropped by the time the game emerged as Clock Tower 2 though. Many collectors though still refer to the Japanese Clock Tower 2 as The Door of Fear. This subtitle, The Door of Fear, helps distinguish it from other regional releases. In 1998, Japan saw its next release in the series, which was to be known as Clock Tower Ghost Head. The characters and location are largely unrelated to the first two games, but the theme of being hunted by a serial killer remains. In 2002, the series had moved on to the PS2, now with Capcom in charge of publishing rights. This game was released under the title Clock Tower 3, and returns to the feel of the original two games. In Japan, this marked the last official release in the series. 
However, a follow-up or alternative game had also been worked on by Capcom. This game featured a young girl also hiding from her pursuer in a large mansion. This time though, she has a dog for a companion. The game was released under the title Demento in Japan. Depending on which account you read, this was intended to be the original Clock Tower 4, but Capcom took the game in a slightly different direction. The game is certainly a spiritual successor to the main Clock Tower series, and most collectors would have an interest in adding this to their collection. So that rounds off Japan. An original, a re-release, a sequel plus alternate demo, a spin-off game, a third game in the timeline, and a spiritual successor. It's no wonder that those outside of Japan find collecting this series a challenge. If we travel to the US, here's how the series looked. There were officially released games known as Clock Tower, Clock Tower 2, Clock Tower 3, and Haunting Ground as the spiritual successor. On the surface, this all makes complete sense if you're living within the US. It's only when you compare to the Japanese releases that you realise that only Clock Tower 3 is the same name and game. I will explain in detail after we look at our last region. Here in the UK, the series was nothing but leftovers from Japan. The UK only saw official release games called Clock Tower and Clock Tower 3, plus the Haunting Ground Extra. With all of these regional differences noted, we can start to piece together where you should start looking if you want to experience the entire Clock Tower series. The original 16-bit Super Famicom game is a Japan release only, as is the first fear. An easy way to remember is that the 2D games are both Japanese language only. For the full complement, you would also need the Wonderswan edition of the original game. Moving on to the next game, this was known simply as Clock Tower in the UK and the US, but Clock Tower 2 in Japan, as the game was chronologically the second part of the series. This game was the first 3D entry and the beginning point for the Western nations. Moving on to the next release, Ghost Head, this had no UK release, but was released as Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within, in the US. For America, this was the second game in the series. Things finally came into sync for Clock Tower 3 on the PS2. This game has the same name and content across all regions. The additional game Demento was released in Japan, but as Haunting Ground in other regions. So, you can see from the visual that if you want to experience the whole Clock Tower series, you're best off collecting the Japanese set. Now, it's at this point that there are viewers saying, but I've played the 2D Clock Tower game in English language. You can even see it on YouTube. This is, of course, absolutely correct, and one of the elements to most confuse the collector's market. Fans of the game were able to patch and translate the game and release this ROM online. It's therefore very easy to play the 2D Super Famicom Clock Tower in an emulated state on PC. When you watch playthroughs on YouTube, this is almost always the version shown. What you're watching is usually a fan-translated ROM of the original Super Famicom Clock Tower game. To add another layer of confusion though, some traders have been able to produce a replica cartridge. Essentially, the producer takes the translated ROM and writes a physical replica on a Super Nintendo cartridge. This can look incredibly authentic, and they have sold for around $50 in the past. They are, however, completely unlicensed and 100% counterfeit. The issue we should have here as collectors is that certain people are profiting not only out of copying the game content, but also off the back of the fan translation that was intended as a free service to the gaming community. In addition, bootleg games of this nature only serve to make bootleggers rich and undermine those looking for the genuine article. I'm sure that I'll get into the whole issue of emulators and bootleg games another time, but it was worth mentioning as an explanation as to why you can play an English language 2D version of the Clock Tower games. One of the big issues with game collecting has always been identifying a reasonable price to pay for the games. Although the series has a reputation for being valuable, and at times rare, it can be more affordable than you think. I hope that this guide has helped you understand the series a little more, and perhaps inspired you to start collecting. The series itself has its highs and lows, so I'll be sure to give retrospectives in the following episodes. You will also be pleased to know that the Clock Tower series is yet to be completed. Project Scissors evolved into a new game known as Nightcry. The game is unofficial in the series, but it very much is inspired by the originals. Join me in the next episode as I take a closer look at the original Clock Tower for the Super Famicom.